in this episode of Finno Greek Machining, well, uh, we are going to uh, make a rim uh, with uh, gear teeth uh, for my neighbor's uh, outboard motor. This uh, it's the flywheel, and uh, well, he has a flywheel that doesn't have the gear for the starter motor. And uh, now uh, this gear should be uh, made into that one. <laughs> well, the materials in this case are really hmm, not unawesome. <laughs> well, uh, well, let's see how, how this goes. First of all, I'm annealing one <laughs> thing there. It's so hard. It's a, again a power shaft from a lorry. And uh, that one is <laughs> uh, really hard. Uh, I hope I can get it uh, the hardness down to uh, uh, well a workable level, and then uh, I will now show you the um, uh, the flywheels and uh, what to do with them. Okay. <coughs> well, uh, as you can see, uh, this flywheel does have uh, this uh, gear rim. Uh, but uh, this is not the one uh, I'm going to work. This is just the model how it should look like uh, after I'm finished with this one. So, uh, <coughs> uh, well, uh, we, what uh, we need to do is to, well, let's put this aside and take the real patient here. Here. <laughs> As you can see, this doesn't have to. <laughs> here. Uh, well, um, yeah, what we need to do is to uh, make a ring here and uh, then uh, make here a recess uh, for that ring. And uh, this one, uh, you typically uh, attach uh, this type of rings uh, by uh, a shrink fit. So, um, well, uh, in this case uh, the machining is not that, uh, because the diameter is so large. Uh, we can, uh, uh, well, we just make it uh, maybe 0 0.1 millimeter too uh, small. I will calculate what's, what's the suitable uh, dimension there. And then uh, heat it, uh, so put this one into a fridge and uh, then have uh, the ring uh, heated to something like 250 degrees. So we, we are getting something like 300 uh, degrees uh, uh, temperature difference. So then it uh, probably it should drop in place and uh, there it is and uh, after a while it uh, when it cools down it uh, will stay there but uh, yeah well uh, as you can see we have a little bit of a problem here uh, the uh, actually the thing should be concentric uh, with this taper here that's a taper and uh, so I need to make a mandrel that has that taper, taper so that I can hold it uh, in my lathe. Uh, so I just uh, screw it uh, from this side uh, to the taper, tighten it into the taper and then I can uh, turn it. And it, uh, I can use the same mandrel when I uh, mill the teeth uh, to this uh, uh, gear rim. Well, here is the... <laughs> Uh, our uh, annealing process. So at the moment uh, it has been uh, quite a while, maybe one hour, around 950 degrees. This temperature will go up and down a little bit uh, depending on whatever it depends. Well now, what I'm doing now, I will uh, start dropping the temperature uh, a little bit at a time. Uh, I could switch this off and it, it would cool down, but that would be too fast. Uh, you have to cool it down slowly. So, what I will do now, I will uh, take 100 degrees away from the temperature, like that. And now it will cool down to that temperature, but uh, it stays there after it has cooled down. It takes for a while to cool down, but uh, yeah. So, yeah. And I will uh, repeat this after it has reached uh, that lower temperature. 
uh, I will then uh, let it be there for, for a while and then I uh, drop it uh, another 100 degrees until I reach uh, 450 after which I, will, I can switch off uh, the whole thing so uh, then it cools down naturally inside there it uh, will take uh, this won't be ready until tomorrow morning <laughs> no. I think everybody recognizes this mm, material. <laughs> well, uh, it's uh, well, it's iron. Yeah, it is. And actually, this is quite soft. Uh, it's not hard. Uh, normally, this type of uh, wheels are really hard, but this one isn't. Uh, for some reason, my neighbor had with with a hacksaw. Ah, oh, cut a teeth away from there and uh, well uh, it went uh, like nothing so uh, probably we can use this well uh, my first task here is to get rid of these teeth <laughs> and it's uh, really melodic <laughs> so this means that it will chatter trying to get rid of the uh, inside of this uh, thing so that we are only left with uh, this uh, rim here just uh, see how it does this will take some time well I will doing this until I get uh, rid of this well uh, yeah uh, I could probably have uh, tried to trip it but uh, this is uh, I'm afraid that when when I get this off it uh, will deform and uh, well well that's bad news for the trip too when it, if it's uh, in the hole when it does that yeah and these chips these are nothing sort of uh, horrific they are very tough and they are very sharp so yeah okay well uh, now uh, it seems to be cool enough so that uh, we can take it out uh, uh, from the oven 
Uh, maybe we have an annealed uh, thing there. So let me zoom out. So, yeah. And let's take a glove. It's still hot <laughs> to touch. But, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> it looks really awesome. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, we have a very strange build-up in, in this one. It's uh, well, it's uh, still like glowing hot. Well, yeah, it's hot. It's hot. But what is this? This is well. <laughs> oh yeah, iron oxide, I believe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, well, uh, the inside of this. Uh, well, I wanted to do the, it this way because uh, now, uh, uh, well, when it would have been uh, uh, really thin, it would have been also very dangerous. So now it's better, <laughs> uh, much safer, and yeah. And so let's see. Uh, okay. Uh, I am turning this uh, inside diameter now to 163 millimeters, and uh, this is really slow. So I place this uh, blade uh, near already there, so it doesn't take uh, forever to reach the <laughs> uh, reach the cutting action, and then uh, I just turn this. I will uh, cut this, uh, these one millimeter cuts until I reach the solid portion. And this, uh, this uh, tool cuts, it's like butter. Really nice. It's silent doesn't make uh, any hassle about this, it just, and that was really a one millimeter cut. Huh. And actually it doesn't uh, do any pounding here. Yeah, okay, maybe that changes uh, when I get nearer. this uh, well I don't have snap cages that would uh, re uh, reach all the way across there uh, well uh, I use uh, this old school method well um, this is a transfer measurement so I transfer the uh, uh, distance here to these well it's a really very simple thing you put these inside here, like that. There, in, and then you wiggle it around here like that. Like back and forth here. And you see that it's quite large, the gap, where it can freely move. 
so it's too large. So these can be adjusted because these don't have the screw. Uh, well, uh, you can uh, try to bend it by uh, 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 stretching by your hand. Uh, doesn't work well. But this does. Uh, if you want to make them smaller, knock this end like this. If you want to make it larger, knock this end like this. Uh, and uh, you learn how much you need to knock. So at the moment, this is really... Uh, we have about that much of movement. Let's take that much. Okay. It became a little bit smaller. Okay. Now it's about 15 millimeters the movement and you repeat this until it uh, now we are about five millimeters it's really near now really near and those taps need to be don't need to be very very huge okay I think we are there it barely moves it moves easily. Yeah. Well, uh, this uh, here is now my 100 uh, to 200 uh, millimeter uh, Steinmeier uh, micrometer. Well, uh, you have uh, interchangeable anvils here, so that uh, you can measure that a large range. Uh, this is for fun. 150 to 175 millimeters. So now, okay, uh, uh, well, uh, the thing is that you put this, it's exactly the same as with uh, um, snap cages. You put this here, and luckily this is very light, so I can put it here uh, against the anvil here, hopefully you can see, and then I wiggle this at here, tighten it a little bit until it tracks. And now you don't squeeze with this because it will spoil your measurement. It's still not. Uh huh. We have something there. Do we? Yeah. Yeah, there you are. So now we should have the measurement. Let's read it. 160, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, I think you might see it. Well, uh, since we need to attach this one uh, <coughs> into our lathe, and also in the milling machine when we mill the teeth. So, uh, well, uh, yeah, uh, well, the obvious way of attaching that would be like uh, clamping it in a forge or chuck on the rim. Well, uh, that would be bad because uh, uh, I need to access this surface here. I need to, uh, need to, uh, well, uh, prepare it for that rim. So, no. Uh, well, the only uh, thing that is left is this this hole here and uh, there is a taper in this hole okay so we make a mandrel which has a taper in it <laughs> well uh, uh, we need to measure that uh, taper first before we can do uh, this uh, mandrel so well, let's see now So, in order to measure a taper, you, you could use calipers and, uh, well, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, then uh, one other way would you be using a uh, protractor? Well, well, maybe, but uh, that's not accurate. Well, Tom Lipton has shown a very accurate way to measure a taper with a pin. And uh, this is a well a raw material I'm going to use for this pin. The nice thing about this measuring method is that uh, 
it's all relative. Uh, you don't need to... There are certain uh, things you need to take care of, but those are really like... Uh, nothing is uh, exact uh, at this point. So uh, we need a pin which has two, two dimensions at each end. The length of this pin is... Uh, well, uh, it's a don't care. Uh, it's irrelevant how long or short it is. The only thing is that both ends must fit inside the taper and they should have uh, different diameters. The diameters itself are also irrelevant. It's just that those should fit into the taper and they should be different. So, well, uh, let's start cleaning this one. I'm uh, now uh, going to make that pin and uh, yeah, I move you nearer so you can see what happens here. So, well, uh, one thing about this uh, special pin is that you don't make a chamfer on this corner. Uh, actually, I don't even debur it. Uh, well, there isn't uh, too much burr, but you shouldn't. If you do that, uh, this will impact your measuring accuracy. So, yeah, this pin is now ready to be used. Okay, so, now let's measure this. Well, I attached uh, this pin into the vise so that uh, I don't uh, need to hold it. So, uh, I place, this is now the smaller end. And I place uh, this on top of that so that it goes into the taper. Well, it's about there. And now, uh, well, uh, I measure the distance from, from this surface here into the end of the pin uh, using this device which I really dislike. Uh, oh, where is my optimizer once again? <laughs> oh. That's bad. Now it relies on those surfaces. Well, actually, I can use them, but I shall always use the same place. That's the idea here. So, quite exactly, actually. 16.9. Okay. So that was the smaller end. And now we turn this thing, this pin. We have magnets here. Uh, I really dislike those. So we turn this pin around. And uh, measure the larger end then. And, well. you are, like that, huh? 31.5, okay, so 31.55. Next we need to know the diameters uh, of these, these diameters. Uh, well, uh, Hopefully, yeah, this I can <laughs> do without 
uh, rambling too much. That's uh, twenty one point ninety. The smaller end. Twenty one point nineteen. And the bigger end them. Okay. Twenty four point twelve. Well, that's all we need. Well, the pin has served its purpose, and uh, now what we do, we do some calculations here. Uh, we are interested in, in, uh, in the differences. The difference between those two is so thirty one point fifty five minus sixteen point ninety equals fourteen point sixty five. So that's actually the difference of the distance there. And then the difference between the pin diameters equals 2.95. How much does it, uh, how long, how much does this change if this is 100? So if we replace this one by 100, and why by 100? Because I have a, a sign bar <laughs> that is uh, 100 millimeters long. So, uh, <coughs> Uh, this should be for oh, uh, which way is it? Fourteen point sixty five divided by two point. No, it cannot be that way. It must be the other way around. So two point ninety five divided by fourteen point sixty five is something like that, times 100, 20.13. Well, <clears throat> if I had to quest here, this figure, because of our measuring mistakes, etc., and because uh, the manufacturers uh, make uh, uh, <coughs> like uh, standardized tapers, so, the correct figure here is 20. Uh, so, for every 100 millimeters, it raises 20 millimeters. But, so if we have it like this, so uh, if this is uh, zero, and then we have here 20. But, since we are uh, adjusting the compound, we have to take only half of that 20, so it has to be 20, 10 exactly. Okay, so I'll adjust my sidebar in a way that we have a 10 millimeter uh, uh, block on the other end, and uh, there we are. That's how we do it. Well, now we shall see whether we uh, succeeded in unkneeling uh, this. Uh, it was uh, like horribly hard, and now I just. Uh, I try to face this uh, first. Uh, let's see now.
at least the end was uh, really soft. Let's take a little bit more. Well, uh, I'm uh, not going to... Uh, well, uh, I clean up this end a little bit. And uh, then I turn it around because I want something uh, really... Uh, I want to hold it uh, securely. And uh, well, uh, this kind of surface isn't secure. So let's face this one more time. the outer side and this uh, blows some. <laughs> uh, this uh, will be fun. <laughs> uh, let's see how much I want to have from there. Maybe that much. Not more than that. That's enough to hold it in the chuck. No, I want to have a little bit more. Like that. Okay. Mm. Now, let's touch it first. up the work piece. Uh, yeah. So I will take uh, one millimeter uh, passes and uh, this will take some time. <laughs> uh, so I come back when I'm uh, a little bit uh, in more interesting part. Uh, this is uh, really you are not seeing anything because it's behind uh, the rubber mat and uh, yeah. So. Well, okay, now uh, this has been turned uh, down to 25 millimeters. And now the, uh, this uh, 20 millimeter portion here should be turned down to 10 millimeters so that I can uh, uh, make uh, M10 thread into it. There we go. And this, uh, I'm running a little bit faster now. Taking 10 millimeter, 1 millimeter cuts, well, I wish a mile to 10 millimeters. Cannot. Well, maybe in brass, but uh, not in this material.
Okay. So, making M10 thread at the end of this uh, thing. <laughs> well, uh, this is M10 die. And I put it there, and then I have my tailstock here to support it, keep it straight. Uh, yeah, and I have uh, uh, put this in back gear and low gear, so it uh, doesn't want to move. And uh, at this time I'm using Rocco here. This seems to work better with uh, threading than my normal, now normal, cutting fluid. And now we see whether this is... Wow. No, it's not bad. It's actually very soft. Good. No, it's not soft, but uh, it's a lot softer than I thought. Yeah. It tries to go sideways always, this one. <laughs> Don't know why. So you have to push it quite a lot with the tailstock so it doesn't go sideways. Okay. Once you get it farther, then it works better. Oh. Well, this is actually a little bit, and not just a little bit, it's quite tough. Well, it's not hard, it's tough. Hmm. Okay, let's take it out. I want to break the chips a little bit now and see. Well, we need probably well, it made a beautiful thread in there. Well, um, <laughs> there is some roughness in it. <laughs> uh, well, okay. Well, let's make a few turns more of those. Now I don't need this uh, tail, tail support no more here. There you are. That's enough. <clears throat> now, uh, before attempting to do this, uh, you should really clean everything here. Uh, try to get most of this stuff out. Uh, any chips there in between your measurements uh, will have an impact. Uh, yeah, so I try to get all the chips away from these surfaces. I'm using this surface and this surface here in the back to check things. And I think this, no, this is, well, Hopefully we and uh, let's open these. It was about five degrees, so I pressed this already to five, so it's easier for us. Uh, so and then I uh, 
tighten it just mildly so that it doesn't move by itself. So then we have a sign bar. Which, okay. We have this sign bar. And then we need something that is 10 millimeters wide. Okay. I adjusted uh, this adjustable <laughs> parallel to 10 millimeters. So now I reject that we don't have any sheet there in between. No, we don't. And then we have that. And then we have a straight uh, like this. And I put it here. And I can see right away that this isn't. Now let's see. It wiggles from this side and not from that side. So I push it a little bit. It still wiggles a little bit from that side. Oh no, it wiggles from that side. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, now it's uh, tight on both sides. Then I recheck it from this side. And we are there. And now I try to tighten this so that it doesn't move. <laughs> well, it's easy in this case. And now recheck this. There you are. <clears throat> and now one more check. This is just a sanity check. I have set up my protractor uh, to the angle and uh, this protractor should now be in, in, in the correct angle. Let's see. Uh, not that way. Which way? <laughs> I can... Uh, okay. This is just to uh, like uh, do a sanity check. Yeah. Uh, well, it's there. Okay, well, and uh, this is how I know that it's about 5 degrees. Yeah, it's about, it's not actually exactly, it's 5 point something, according to the scale in this uh, plate. And let's see one more time that these are really there. Yes, they are really there. Uh, and now we should be able to turn the tape. half a millimeter cut first and uh, five millimeter deep. Uh, uh, the final depth uh, should be something like six but I leave the last millimeter to for finalizing this. Yeah. And this is running really slowly. Something like maybe one turn uh, a second. So 60 turns, maybe 80 turns per minute. Oh man, it's cast iron. Okay. Then 
I need to do something for my protection. I will go on with this one and uh, as you can say shit happens uh, this is the original ring I made and it should be a shrink fit into that one well that is uh, at the moment uh, 165.3 quite exactly millimeters and uh, this is well <laughs> no chance shrink fitting that one. What happened? Well, uh, a typical uh, mistake reading the micrometer. Yeah. So, uh, it's five millimeters too big. <laughs> exactly, actually. It's very accurate hole, but it's uh, five millimeters too big accurate hole. So, uh, now I have here another one, uh, which is a little bit better, actually, a lot better. So it fits. I know uh, there is a difference uh, now. Uh, this hole is uh, 0 0.2 uh, uh, millimeters. Oh, there is a magnet. 0 0.2 millimeters too small. Yes! Okay! <laughs> uh, now we have uh, this uh, gear plank attached uh, to this flywheel. The flywheel itself is uh, running uh, really straight, but <laughs> uh, this uh, gear plank is uh, having a wobble. Uh, not a lot, but it's having a wobble. Uh, and it's uh, not like it would be tilted and uh, wobble that way, no. It, it's uh, warped. Uh, well, uh, but I will deal with that one once I get the diameter turned to the target dimension. Uh, this is going to be a 95 teeth uh, uh, module 2 gear. Uh, means that uh, uh, the major diameter of this one should be uh, 194 millimeters. So, 
uh, well, and uh, this is way over 200 at the moment. So, yeah. And I'm peeling off uh, like uh, half a millimeter at a time. Uh, you, you cannot peel more. Uh, it's uh, really... And I'm feeling this direction towards you because uh, the chips, uh, there is a magnet there. And if I would uh, go in that way, the chips would go into the magnet and collect there. Uh, not very good because it... Uh, well, then, uh, well, it's not, not a good thing. So, and I'm running this uh, quite slow. At the moment it's something like uh, 100 maybe. 80 revolutions per minute. But the feed is uh, 0 0.076 uh, millimeters per revolution. And uh, my uh, cutoff depth is uh, 0 0.25 millimeters per side. So it's uh, half a millimeter from diameter. So, our goal diameter here is uh, 194 millimeters. And uh, if everything is right, uh, this uh, should now be 194.5 millimeters. Uh, let's see. Uh, the brake is off. Uh, and then I would like to turn this to a certain position. So, and uh, this is not very easy to measure. Okay, here under. Ah. Okay, now. So, well, uh, let's see now. Okay, so I wiggle it here around until I can feel a drag. Okay, it's dragging. There you are, that's our place, seems to be. Uh, and, oh well, huh, we are very exactly at that dimension, it's uh, 194. Let's, uh, so, this is uh, measuring now from 175 to <laughs> to 100 uh, to 200 so 75 80 85 90 1 2 3 4 94 okay 194.5 so 0 0.5 millimeters away from that surface and we are finished okay yeah uh, I have to double read my micrometer because, uh, well, that micrometer is really easy to misread and that would be disastrous. Okay, that's the last pass now. The last operation here is to make chamfers here. I already made one uh, and now I will do the other side. <laughs> and uh, this is... Uh, oh! It's about uh, 1.5 millimeters deep. And uh, yeah, let's see now.
hopefully this now works. <laughs> so, uh, what we have now uh, achieved uh, is a gear plank here. And it's uh, straight and it's uh, ready to be milled uh, the teeth into. Well, uh, I don't do it in this episode and there is a reason for this. I don't have the cutter. I could probably make one uh, from uh, high speed steel, grind, a 40 degree angle because this is, uh, I believe this is a uh, rack teeth. So you, you could probably make it very easily, a cutter. But it would be a fly cutter and uh, that would uh, be very bounding cut and uh, I'm not very, very, I don't like, like the idea. <laughs> so, uh, well, uh, it won't be in the next episode, they are on the way, my module 2 cutters. But uh, maybe the next one or the one after that, I don't know. Anyway, uh, this will wait until I get the cutter. <laughs> uh, instead, in the next episode we will be having a, a break. Uh, not a break like a lunch break, a real break. So, uh, well, but uh, that break <laughs> uh, will be in the next episode of Window Break Machining. And uh, yeah, till then, bye!